How is it possible that they imprison a man who is cleaning the streets of Horl of all those people? They should leave him free. Criminals flee and sinners hide because I'm coming to town. God gave me the commandment. It's time to shave my head, put on my white t-shirt, a smile, and then they'll call me Mr. Clean as I cleanse the streets. I didn't see you there. It all started early this morning. From hunting ghosts to Bigfoot, UFOs, cryptids, true crime, paranormal, and more. I've always wanted to see a UFO. Oh, I was I was researching for your entertainment. That's Bigfoot's guess. He basically wrote the book on modern cult. We aren't really comedians. What if Buddha did cocaine? The Adams Family on meth. This, this is, is the, the Black, Black Hat Report. Report. See you on the other side. Welcome to the Black Cat Report in episode 97. I am Joey, and with me is, with no introduction, Gil. Did you want me, you, last time you said no introduction. And with me is Gil. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I think uh, what I meant to say with no uh, performatives, no no adjectives, no, it's not how it came across, no? Mm-hmm. Quite literally, well, you said, with me, with no introduction. <laughs> <is killed>. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. I guess I shouldn't introduce you then. Well, I'm Joey, and I'm the only one on this podcast today. <laughs> only kidding. Before we get into our topic, we want to give a huge shout out to Inner Scare for including us in his show on YouTube Live. We freaking enjoyed it and couldn't be more happier to know you and your family. Yeah, thank you so much for having us on last week. It was an absolute blast, and um, we'll be we'll be figuring out a way to sneak you into Black Cat Report at some point in the near future. Oh, for sure. I can't wait to do that. And Gil, I don't know if you want to take it over and kind of give our next episode for B3 and give an introduction for it, or you want me to? I've got it. Yeah, so our next episode of Beer, Booze, and Boogeyman is going to be on Saturday, June 1st. 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. It's going to be uh, a night of mayhem and debauchery. I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. It's going to be a game for callers and for hosts to participate in, so all of us get to play. And Basically, the rules are simple. You call in, and you tell us a tale. It could be a tall tale. It could be a complete and total lie, or it could be the truth. It has to be something incredible that's happened in your life, something that you're aware of, some fantastical story, right? You call in, we all get to hear your story. We might ask you a few questions here or there, and then we open up the polls. We allow folks to vote on it, on whether or not we think you're telling truth, or we think you're telling trash. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Now, y'all definitely aren't gonna wanna miss this one, and we made it really easy to remember. All you have to do, at the very, very top of the show description, wherever the heck you're listening to this podcast, there's going to be a link. It's going to say Beer, Booze, and Boogeyman, with a little finger emoji pointing to the link. Click that link. It'll take you straight to where the YouTube live stream will be. You could just click Notify right on that little stream right there. So I know we're telling you this early. It's like a month ahead of time. It's a super easy way to remember. And um, yeah, if you don't have a great tale, then... Uh, Get writing. Heck, yeah, can't wait for it. Also, you can give us your tall tales and your short tales, like either or, where we take either or. I mean, but just make sure your tales don't actually part truth and part false, because then they're just both, and we can't play a game that way, right, Go? Um, hmm. Talking about mid-tales. Mid-tales could work. Um, I'm going to have to work on the, the game rules a little bit. Okay. In the yeah, meantime. I mean. But yeah. We got a month. We got a little just more. Just lie to we us. Just month. lie to us. That's all we want. Just lie to us. Try to trick yeah. all of us. Try to trick your favorite hosts. Um, try to get us to crack. Like really get us to buy in and believe complete bullshit and um, have a laugh on us. Or maybe we'll pull through and we'll surprise you. And you'd be like, oh shit, now I have to second guess all this other shit I've heard on their show over the past two years. <laughs> like... Yeah. Gil's actual third nickname that we that he's been given is the uh-huh. human lie detector test. Yes. Um, so he is very good at being, uh, he's been nicknamed that by uh, friends, police, um, politicians, uh, uh-huh. UFO nerds, UFO members, UFO people. Nerdy you know, UFOs. Everybody. 
Yes, yeah, no, it's, it's um, it's made embroidery um with my initials like incredibly pricey. Well, today, everybody, you know, I talked on last episode, you know, that I that I did the episode for the moon episode that I was just I, I needed a break from you know conspiracy theories. Gil saw me pulling out my hair during that episode. Almost I after the it. episode, I was almost bald, just like our uh, Mister Clean. Um. So uh, today we're going to delve into something that's more in my wheelhouse. And this says shouldn't say that much about me, that the episode is going to be about a serial killer. <laughs> but today we're going to delve into El Apostle de la Muerte, Pedro Pablo Messias Ludinha, the Apostle of Death, which is in English. Okay, I thought the translated sources... from Spanish or Italian. Was that, is that Spanish? Is that Spanish? Spanish, yes. Okay, I thought translated from Peru. Spanish, it was the murderer of pasta, and I was like, "There's my fourth nickname." But dude, yeah. <laughs> yes, that is also going to be your fourth nickname. Now. <laughs> yes, the murderer of pasta. Well, for the the sources for today's episode will be listed in the show notes. So let's go ahead and dive in, shall we? Yes, sir. Pedro was born in El Augustino, Peru, which is a bigger part of the city of Lima, on February 28, 1973. He is a Pisces. I don't know why I put that in there, but every time I get a serial killer, I just like to give, you know, people out there love to have the, they love to have the uh, cancer, the signs out there, you know, for who they are, right? It's true. Well, not to be confused with the other Pedro we did an episode about not that long ago, Pedro Lopez, the monster of the Andes, Pedro Ladinha was a monster unto himself, not killing just for pleasure, but what he felt was his duty. Like with most serial killers, we must get into the history of his parents, right? Like normal, we always do this. His father was an alcoholic and was abusive towards Pedro's mom. And I don't want to extrapolate here, but most of the time, it that abuse kind of spills over to the children as well. I'm not saying it always happens, but sometimes it, it happens. Yeah. And it did. It did in this case, obviously. Uh. Pedro's mom had an undisclosed mental illness as well, which they also never mentioned what she actually had, but she and and uh, the dad actually passed away before they could interview them for anything and maybe find out what was going on with them. But okay. uh, it's just, you know, is most everything that we get is from Pedro himself. So I just want to preface this before the intro of the everything. We get Super it from Pedro and the police. Yeah, super trustworthy on both sides. Super accurate. Yeah. There is no ulterior motives. This is mm -hmm. this is exactly like if you had a time machine. This is what you would see. That's that's what I just exactly. Heard. But we do know what Pedro and his brother's illness was because it was after they went to trial. They diagnosed him with paranoid schizophrenia, which was one of the things that him and his brother had. And so if I want to say that's kind of like most likely what his mom had, because that is also a family history, mm -hmm. genetic kind of thing that passes down. My grandmother had that and supposedly, you know, well, we won't go into it. We'll just stop there anyways. But is this <laughs> why you only ever record from inside of a bank safe? I'm pretty safe there. So, yes, I'm surrounded by gold, right? The audience can't see, but it is literally tens of thousands of toilet paper rolls around him right now during covid that was gold <laughs> that how was come, gold how come <laughs> <laughs> your first reaction defend it yeah, yes well let's get into the next part of it before i bring up the rest of his childhood i want to say and we kind of preface this because you know we talk about people's you know serial killers histories all the time mm -hmm. I want to say that people with abusive backgrounds don't always turn out like this serial killer, nor do all paranoid schizophrenics turn out to be killers. Sometimes they just start paranormal podcasts. Exactly. And you know, it's and I think it's important to remind people of that because it's definitely not the only reason that Pedro became a murderer. And as we describe people in our serial killer series and add into them their mental illness or past trauma or things like that, many people rise above those every day, become great people and great members of society in their own right. So we here at Black Hair Report want to get rid of that stigma. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one quote that Pedro said to the police after his capture about growing up, my family is bad. Mm. My parents always fought. My dad hit my mom a lot. I was running away from the house, but I came back because I had nowhere to eat. What What year was this? I, I don't want to take this too far, but I'm just curious. When he got arrested? 
No, no, no. Around the time that he was growing up. Uh, seven, he was born in 73, so he was probably growing up in between 80 to 90. So this was... In Peru. Yeah, <laughs> this was <laughs> the same horribly fucked up time as Pedro Alonso Lopez. Yes, sir. Just in a di- another country. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, but like, it's... Cr- damn. Yeah, so when he... He may have had a very, very, very fucked up childhood. Um, you know, like home life, I should say. He may have, may have had a very fucked up home life. Um, and it still was better than, <laughs> than just being out on the streets. Like, Yeah. Well, a, a lot of this childhood trauma would mark all of his early years. Thinking about trying to escape, but you just can't because you can't survive anywhere else. And I think we talked about that in the Pedro Lopez series is like he basically ended up having to leave because he couldn't deal with it anymore. You know, went on the streets as a kid. Well, Pedro mentioned that he had one of the worst traumas when he was super young. He was four years old. Uh. He mentioned to police that he was assaulted and raped by his brothers because he had killed and mutilated a dog the family had owned. That's four years old. That's not a legitimate reason to assault and rape someone. I mean, no, it's not it, at all. K- killing, you know, murdering a dog, abusing a dog, that's totally a legitimate reason mm-hmm. to assault somebody. Like, beat the fucking yes. shit out of them, obviously. Yeah. But the, 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 the R part of it, that's, that's where it's like, I'm, uh, what? You know, like, yeah. I don't know. I, I, something well, smells fishy about these brothers. Right. What made it worse was that the dog was pregnant. And I think that's why they also went even more haywire on him. And this is between his brothers and sisters doing all this to him. And so it's it's super interesting to see how he said this after he was arrested. So again, you're you're looking back on him going, Okay, do you think this is true? Yeah, you know, and yeah. if it is true, it's horrible. And it's all horrible four years old, that is just Yeah. It's it's rough. Any any year is rough. And yeah. then four years old, you you don't know, you know no, you know nothing. You know you're There's, still a baby. I'm gonna take it back a little bit. There's a lot going on here. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> like there's there's a lot going on here, and nothing is just the uh, the one plus one equals two. Like there's good Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and and as time went on, he and talked to the police. Later, he mentioned that this was one of the driving factors for him to start his murder spree. His abuse by his family wouldn't stop there. He was consistently mocked and made to play dress up like a girl by his sisters, which was like, uh, some, this is like a harmless, funny game, you know, but this might have been the end of his world, you know? Who doesn't have sisters that play dress up, you know, dress them, dress their little brothers up or put makeup on them when they're young? But still, I don't want to minimize the trauma that this could have caused him. You know, I think I think it'd be good to like pull it back to like there's things that influence the monster. Uh Right. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, if it's a terribly bad and stormy day, um, you know, the the prince waiting to save the princess is stuck inside waiting for the rain to stop the same as the dragon. Uh You know, the same things can affect people's decisions, but it's their character that you know these things add up and they influence yep. the the flavor of the monster and like in terms of like how they become because Agreed. none of these things even in whole are like make you a serial killer that shit's inherent yep. i don't give a fuck what anybody says somebody was already on that path like on that trajectory and it was what they learned and what they experienced that just kind of like set the dials you know, well, and you can say it too. Is like I think there is more people pre more predisposed to being serial killers than than normal. But they get some if they don't get pushed into that direction, they might not become serial killers. They might become podcasters. They might become politicians, stuff like that. So you know, it just everything. Yeah, I'm I'm so yeah. excited for that fusion restaurant, the serial killer <laughs> podcast politician <laughs> restaurant. There's a difference between like yeah. Um, causing somebody to become a serial killer and influencing the person who is a serial killer. You know, a great chef. I really agree. A, an incredible, you know, five star chef in Thailand would have probably also become a five star chef if they were raised in Mexico. 
if they were raised in Arizona, if they were raised in, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it, it's that inherent drive in them and how they choose to take those ingredients in their drive and work from there on, you know, that's that's the human yeah. element. Yeah, I understand that completely. I, you know, that, that makes a lot of sense. Well, he also had another big trauma when he was young. Hit in the head. During his young years, his father passed away. Oh, okay. Yeah, which this devastated him because his father, even though he was abusive, he still helped shoo away his brothers and sisters from abusing Pedro mentally and physically, right? It's such a weird uh, thing. Did the father was just like, "Hey, don't don't mess with your brother. Don't mess with your brother. He's yo- you know he's young. He's like, where'd you learn that from? Yeah, yeah. where'd you learn yeah. that from? Well, you know, throughout his teens, he moved on from killing dogs uh-huh. to killing other animals. Uh-huh. So it's kind of when I look at you know him saying that he didn't kill the dog, he didn't do a thing to the dog. <laughs> And then he goes on into killing animals. I'm just kind of like, but did you? Come on, man. Did like, you though? You're, did you? Yeah. Did you though? Did you? Well, yeah. he started to take great pleasure in murdering cows, horses, uh-huh. bulls, like huge things. Uh-huh. He said it wasn't just killing them that gave him pleasure. It was watching them suffer as they died uh-huh. that he really enjoyed. And that was his big thing. Serial Killer 101, killing animals. Well, that's that inherent, that's that's the first murder that a human can get away with, mm-hmm. you know, and that nobody is judging them for, especially like depending on the situation. Like you had um, Joachim Kroll, who was working out on farms and like slaughtering animals and loved it. He was a full on fucking boner the whole goddamn time, you know, as he was like yeah. slaughtering fucking like, what was it, like pigs and cows and shit. Um, and it's their first, to, they, they're they allowed to do that and get away with that in society. Yeah. So. And even lauded for it. Yeah. You know, I mean, because you straight up get employed. It, you know? You straight up yeah. get employed yeah. doing it, you know? Yep. Um, But that's also the human react. Like, that's where it's different with the serial killer. That reaction. Most folks feel remorse. They feel guilt. They have to develop a sense of, like, uh-huh. necessity or like, you know, like they have to take on that pain as a source of like, I, d- I hate doing this, but I have a sense of pride because it feeds my family, it feeds my community. It's, yep. a, you know, it's a da 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 Like we have to develop these ways of coping with that kind of shit because human beings, when they're right in their head, don't enjoy killing. <laughs> no, <laughs> like, they don't find pleasure in it. Not yeah, at there's at no all. pleasure in it. Yeah. No, no. Well, Moving on to when he was about 17 or 18. So this is pretty much his whole childhood. He was just getting abused. His father passed away, all that stuff. So moving on, he's almost an adult, you know, in the eyes of the law, right? Pedro said that he joined the Peruvian Air Force as a mechanic. And this has been, it's kind of been back and forth in the news and in the articles that I was looking at, saying that they don't think he joined the military. They said it was false. But in his later career, he becomes a car mechanic. So I'm just kind of like, hmm, maybe, maybe he was, maybe he wasn't, you know, it's, it's his narrative, you know? So it's kind of, we're kind of trying to pull out the truth where we can. Yeah. Well, this would be around 1990 or so. So within two months of being in the military, he gets kicked out because Mm. they diagnosed him with paranoid schizophrenia and psychopathic tendencies. So they saw it quick. Damn. Yeah. He, you know, he's around guns all the time. He's, you know, taking care of cars that have guns on top of them. They're kind of like, we can't have you in this area because we're afraid that you're going to shoot one of the your fellow soldiers, kill them, or yeah. go kill civilians, you know? Well, after this, he went into a deep depression after being rejected by the military, and he didn't take going back into the real world well. Bro, it was only two months Sorry, I'm just, I'm just, he's just like, how can I ever go back to my previous life? And it's just like, yeah, it, did you've been gone for less than 60 days. I don't know what the fuck. Aha, I can't even remember how to use forks anymore. <laughs> you know? It's yeah, like, yeah. Wh- well, what? It's, it's funny too. It's two months, but like, just like when he was killing cows and, and not, you know, and not really being lauded for it, but still nobody was mm. batting an eye. I think he found the place that he was like, I can kill people mm. and they'll be like good job good job he found he found purpose and pleasure mm-hmm. yeah exactly purpose and pleasure well just after being rejected from the military he claimed to have killed his first human victim right 
So okay. the reason he gave for killing the person was that he saw them stealing a watermelon from a fruit cart. I mean, that's all. That's understandable. Do you like watermelons that much? Do you're okay with murder? I just for? really respect fruit carts. This reminds me of Frank Oldfield shooting the guy in the back after he stole from the fruit stand. <laughs> <laughs> Literally just like for no reason at all. I like to bring him up because he's just... It, the line between criminal and law enforcement officer is, in some ways, is such a fine line. Joey, that's the only reason why, you know, we started the show is I was slowly trying to get you to realize that. No, it's it's super funny. And and just researching all these stories and these the history, you know, you're just like, sometimes, you know, and obviously sometimes you can be like, okay, that he's helping people or she's helping There's people. There's justification this, the area, but... sometimes. Yeah. You know, at least yeah. to the extent that we can find the information. But you know, sometimes it's a little bit weird to protect a dude so that you can kill a dude and you'll kill other dudes if they try to kill the dude that you're going to kill. <laughs> like it's, yeah. What it's, the fuck? it's a whole mess, messed up pasta of, yeah. of, you know. It's a murder pasta. Yeah. It's a murder pasta, right? So this would start to be one of his reasons for killing in the future just because the guy was stealing. No joke. <laughs> Fruit-related crimes. Fruit, only fruit-related crimes are going to be from here on out. Let's fast forward another few years, 13, in fact, right, to 2003. So we're Shit. just moving through these things because there's really no history. So 2003, Pedro is about 30 years old. Okay. He decides it's time to change his name. Gil, do you want to try to guess what he changed his name to? I'm just sitting here. I'm like, I'm in Pedro's head. It's a dark place, although the walls are all painted in red. And I'm sitting here and I'm thinking... You know, my name's Pedro. Um, I'm I'm looking around. I'm probably living in like a studio apartment. There's probably dead animal corpses on the ground next to me. What what could I possibly? You know, it's the dirty thirty. You got to do something. You know, at your dirty something 30. big. Something it big. It is the most important. You know, fucking birthday of anyone's life, um, alive or dead. And you know, I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh, what does he do? What does he do? He's looking at his pasta. He's looking at his gun. He's looking at his pasta. He's looking at his gun. He's looking over at his dirty dishes. Then he sees a cleaning solution. Oh. And he's like, that guy right there, he knows how to bald gracefully as he's rubbing the back of his head that's going bald. <laughs> he shaves his fucking head. Reaches out to Procter and Gamble, which I'm assuming owns Mr. Clean. I don't know, but I feel like that's a safe guess. PNG. Yeah. Good guess. Procter and Gamble. He reaches out to them and he says, "Hey, y'all need a mascot." They say, "No." We heard about what happened in the in the Air Force. <laughs> he says, "Too bad, bitch. I'm already representing you." Walks outside with a gun and a paper bag. Shoots the first kid he sees that shorted the ice cream man. <laughs> That's but and uh, oh, um, Mr. Clean. And what's his name? Oh, oh, his name. No, well, he changed it. Oh, that, or he changed it to Peter, which would have just been weird. Well, he didn't even do that much, right? Mm. So he changes his full name, which was Pedro Pablo Messias Ludinia. Dope name. To Pedro Pablo Nakata Ludinia, mm. because he wants to go and live in Japan. Okay, I feel like the the second middle name wouldn't have been my first choice, but. Hey, no, that actually no. that makes me feel better because I can't understand the inner workings of this uh, serial killer. I don't understand it either. Well, uh, there is a point. I think there is a little bit of a point to this because he paid. I'll get into why there's a point. Mm -hmm. He paid a Japanese citizen 800 Peruvian soles to adopt him so he could change his name and then become a citizen of Japan so that he could immigrate okay. and live there. Okay. I want to say this isn't because. He loves Japan, and he thinks oh. he'd be right at home here. Okay. It was most likely because this is also a common tactic used by Peruvian criminals to escape justice and flee mm. the country. A lot of them go change their name, get adopted by someone. It's such a weird thing to do, but a lot of them do it. <laughs> I like to think there's just like, <laughs> there's just some like um, Japanese, like foreign, like, you know, uh, expat, like Japanese expat like yeah. Reddit somewhere where they're just like, dude, it's super easy to make a living in Peru. All you gotta do is tell people you're <laughs> Japanese. They will just start giving you money and like, yeah, 
we're not even actually fucking married, yo. I'm just, I've I've 457 kids. These motherfuckers leave state welfare, baby. Like I am making bank, and you can too. And like you know, you don't American even style. have to adopt them. You, you don't, don't even, even have, have to, to adopt them. You think they're going to be able to afford a plane flight back from Japan when they realize they nope, can't get stuck. in? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, they're going to Korea. <laughs> there's just, oh, there's just, oh. Oh, they're going to middle Korea. Not even, <laughs> not even, they're going to East Korea. Nobody talks yeah. about that. But like, no. um, but there's just no. like border crisis in Japan. And it's just like 40,000 Peruvians that are confused. Like, God damn it. <laughs> like, They're just standing on, a sh- on the shore of Japan being like, we can't come in. <laughs> God damn it. Well, even though he changed his name, he wasn't going to be the first of his family to go abroad. Mm. He had a brother that we'll talk about later that would be the first of his family to go abroad and make a name for himself, but we'll keep that at that for now. Okay. Now, I found a source that had a transcript of Pedro's police confessions, and he noted that he was married and had three sons. So I imagine sometime in between 2000 to 2005, he got married and had children. There's no record of this that I can find that anybody that is researched into this can find. And if you can find it, send it to us at contact at blackcat.report. And Gil is apparently sending this to me because he found it right now. He's just literally not even looking at the screen. This is, this is, this is like, this is how easy the email is to use. You've got mail. No, I, I'm not easy. actually doing yeah. it, but I'm assuming oh, that he just the looks kids... like he's doing it. <laughs> I'm assuming that the kids' names were Shout, OxyClean, and Ajax. Is that, is yes. that right? <laughs> I think that's close. I it doesn't mention because, and I think that they probably changed their names so they weren't identified with this guy. But <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, just like gotcha. most of the serial killers' families do. Well, he wanted to provide for his family, and he got a job at a mechanic shop, kind of just like we described earlier when he was a mechanic in the Air Force. Is he in he Japan? Became, he just got a, No, he did not make it to Japan. He, he did still not improved. make it to Japan. He okay. didn't even make it out of his home area. Okay, he still hasn't left. Well, the mechanic shop was in the residential area of Joro, Peru, which is in Lima. Uh-huh. It's like right on like a little city outside of Lima. Okay. And it was there that he would hatch his plan to cleanse the streets. Because, I mean, if I'm in that position in life, that's what I'm thinking is I'm like, this has nothing to do with me, my decisions, and my untreated mental illness. This has everything to do with a lot of folks who... I have never associated with. Exactly. Yes. Mm. Well, solid. Solid, right? So Pedro started hearing commandments from, in quotations, God. Mm. Something along the lines of what you would hear in the Joseph Callinger delusion story. And I think if, Gil, do you not know about Joseph Callinger? Not at all. Refresh me. Oh, well, Joseph Callinger is, was called the shoemaker, right? And he was the killer. Um, he he killed three, four people, I think. Oh, the dude that was digging the giant hole in the house with his kids and, yes. and shitting oh, in it. Okay. Yes, yes, yep, that guy. Yes, okay, yes, I do know. Yes, I do know. Sorry, Joseph Callinger was also a schizophrenic, and he mm-hmm. heard commandments from God to kill everyone on Earth. Yeah, Pedro's commandment was not so lofty, right? In his own words, he said. Half of them. Honestly, it probably is half of them if we're going to decide what it's kind of like this. Well, I'm not going to be crazy like these other ones. I know you can't kill everyone, which is why just going to get half. It's half off, baby. (laughs) (laughs) I actually think that's kind of close to what uh, the commandment was. So in Pedro's own words, it was, I am not a criminal. I am a cleaner. Hence the Mr. Clean. I have rid society of homosexuals and vagrants. I'm just trying to purify the earth of prostitutes, drug addicts, homosexuals, and robbers. End quote. You realize this sounds like a poorly translated version of the Nixon tapes when he was getting exposed for Watergate, right? Yes. He's like, yes. I'm not a crook. I've yes. been blah, blah, blah. <laughs> he was just- And it's funny there that was you just used a, it before. <laughs> there was just a radio playing that was like fucking 30 years behind. And it was poorly, yeah. tra- it was poorly translated. Yeah, that's God exactly- what his his command I'm was. not a crook. 
starting off with, I am not a criminal. And this is what he said after he's been arrested already being like, you're a criminal. Uh Uh-uh. I know you are, but what am I? I'm the police. (laughs) I am all police. (laughs) Yeah. We can say that you are a criminal. Hmm. I know you are, but what am I? (laughs) (laughs) Sir, you're under arrest. It doesn't matter. We're not going to talk to you anymore. Throw him in jail. (laughs) Well, on January 1st, 2005, moving ahead a few years, he started his murder spree, which is what he can claim and police have claimed as his murder spree. That would claim 17 victims in less than two years. Damn. Yeah, he was moving that's, quick. Dude, that's like, that's that's more than one every, that's more than one every two months. Like, that's like. It gets worse because. Oh, no. I'll, I'll describe why 16 of them were in one day. <laughs> like, yeah. Almost, actually. Oh, fuck. His first victim was Carlos Alberto Marina Aguilar, who was 26, and he was killed by two gunshots, one in the thorax and the other bullet right through the abdomen, and then he bled out. This was right on the Chorito de Chanque Beach, which is pretty wide open in the area, right? Yeah, yeah. Guys, yeah, it's pretty open, so he gets away with this, right? Was this in like the middle of the day or at night or like? It was at six p.m. Oh, so this so, is like straight up like afternoon on the beach, yeah. which is like yeah, this for is locals afternoon. the best fucking time to go to the beach. <laughs> like, right? Damn. Okay. Pedro claimed this murder was part of his plan and said that he felt Carlos was going to rob him. In Pedro's brain, this person was a robber. But the irony here is Pedro then proceeded to take Carlos's <laughs> money and wallet. Pedro could have been a cop. Yeah. He, Pedro could have been mm, a cop. Mm-hmm. Could, oh, wait. Is he going to become a cop? Oh, Sadly, no. Fuck. He gets caught too quick. We're going to find a serial <laughs> well, killer that does this shit and then becomes a cop. But anyways. After this murder, Pedro took a bit of a break. Perhaps... I don't know, maybe shocked at what he had done and maybe trying to lie low a bit so he wouldn't be found by the cops. I think that's probably more about... Kind of a... It, not quite a walkabout, more like a stalkabout. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, he didn't murder for about a year and four months. This is why I say 17 and two years, mm-hmm. technically. Mm. It's like 16 and like six months almost. Shit. So, yeah. so at this point, he's yeah. killed two people so far. He killed that first yes, person. He's, cla- he's claimed to kill two people. They never okay. found that first person, but he okay. claimed that he killed that first person. Yeah. So he's killed yeah. a pregnant dog and two people. Yes. At and least. a bunch of cows and yeah. horses and, you know, and bulls. I mean, this is basically just the montage training scene from any action movie in the most fucked up way possible. Very true. And I mean, he's, you know, this is his warm up, right? Uh. Well, it's not really known whether he committed any other crimes during that time, that year and four months. Okay. But it seems so because of the way his other murders went down, right? He comes back advanced as fuck, doesn't he? He comes back advanced as fuck. And with his mm. a new MO, right? Mm. So he shot this guy twice and in the chest, right? So basically from the chin down, these two shots were in. The chin to like the bottom of his sternum. He's changed his name now. During this brief time, this is what I'm hearing. Again, he changes his name now yeah. from from Pedro, being his first name um, in in Spanish in Peru, mm-hmm. to Mexican Spanish as Pedro. He's a totally <laughs> yes. new man. <laughs> yeah, he's a new man. New man. Well, his next murder was a 50 year old woman. This is a year and four months later, right? So his next murder was a 50 year old woman named Teresa Catrina Abed. He passed by her as she was smoking a cigarette Mm. and he thought it was drugs. Mm. So he shot her two times in the head. Cigarettes are drugs. Well, I mean, he thought it was weed. He thought it was whatever else he he thought. I'm just saying he kind of followed every D.A.R.E. commercial. Uh, The D.A.R.E. commercial is correct. Murder them if they're smoking. (laughs) I think that's what I remember. Just the fucking D.A.R.E. Dare lion comes up, (laughs) gives him a thumbs up, and then starts eating the fucking corpse on the street. (laughs) <laughs> that is dare to a T, honestly. That's what I remember. Well, before I get into the next murders, right, I want to say this literally doesn't sound like he is following what God told him to do. With the first murder, 
He literally <laughs> became the robber. He literally became the robber of the person that he was saying was going to rob him. I'm sorry, but like, I'm not saying it's bad if you, I'm not saying you should be embarrassed if you get robbed on a beach. That's not what I'm saying. But I am saying you should 100% be embarrassed by, do not go to the police, do not let this go public, especially if you're in Florida, because we'll all know about that shit in like two hours. Mm-hmm. If yep. you get robbed by a dude in a Speedo on a beach, like it, you, you didn't try. That's all I'm saying. It's no, like, I, no. you know what I'm saying? And now if you're like the dude in the Speedo on the beach and somebody comes up in like non-beach clothes and is like, give me all your shit. And you're like, where am I going to put that? You know, like, again, the beach yeah. is such an awkward place to crime. You know, honestly, unless it's, it's like, unless it's like, unless you're just stealing public, real quick, you know, unless you know what I'm saying, you're getting down, you know, you know what I'm saying, and like you're yeah. doing some shit on the beach. That's kind of the only crime that happens on the beach or in the water. Yeah, you know, I mean, people's stuff does get stolen though. I mean, you know, that happens a bit, yeah, but that's but, like that. That's like if you leave your stuff on the beach on your by your bag, you go out to swim, and then people come and take your stuff. But if you're fully aware, if you're fully aware, somebody's a thief. It's on you to walk away. I don't know why I'm trying to argue. This dude has a lot of other issues. He's already murdered somebody. Yeah, I'm just don't help this guy. <laughs> don't I'm, help I'm this not. Guy. I'm not. I'm just like trying to argue against his logic, and I'm like, why am I doing this? That's oh, silly. Yeah. Um. So they, yeah, this guy probably in a speedo on the beach, just fucking chilling, sunbathing, doing you know beach shit. Is just, he's just sitting over there yeah. on the side. He's like, he's totally gonna fucking rob me. Jesus Christ! Did you see the yeah. way he just turned? Did you see the way he just turned? He's just like talking to a seagull. Well, you know, and I think a lot of that could be just a schizophrenia brain. I think 100% of it is. Yeah. It's being like God in this this voice is telling him like, that guy's going to rob you. That guy's going to rob you. That guy's going to rob you. Yeah. And that guy could just was literally probably just walking down the walkway, down, down the uh, pier. You just know, like and this guy's eating, just like, con- <laughs> eating cotton candy with his like twelve year old daughter, and they're just like jitterbug. Yeah, just that movie. You put the boom boom into my heart, boom boom. Yeah, and they're just like, and he's like this fucking thief. And the whole time, I do like to picture God as the seagull next to him as he's creeping on this guy, talking, and he's just like, he's gonna kill you. Give me a French fry. <laughs> and he's just like, yeah, he's going to fucking kill me. He's going to rob you. Another French fry. Yeah, no, he's totally going to rob me. He's like, he's going to d- get me another French fry. He's not going to give you another French fry. Those are my French fries to I'm, give you. Those are mine. Another French yeah. fry. And, and there's like 15 or honestly, it's at the beach, 45 other seagulls come up. And he's like, oh, my God, there are more gods than I thought there were. I've given this dude 47 yeah. voices so far, but they all work. It's fine. They all, hey, he's, you know, he probably has 47 voices in his head right now telling him to do stuff. So well, we have Seagull God talking to him, telling him to, yes. and then we fast forward from there. Okay. Yeah, right. Well, his second murder, she was just smoking a cigarette. So yeah. he got bothered by that and then shot her. Now, I'm not going to go through all 17 of his proven murders, but I want to quickly go through a few of them just so we can understand where his mind is at as far as his mission as the, in quotations, the cleaner, right? Uh-huh. So, you know, fast forward, his eighth, ninth, and tenth murder happened on November 22nd, 2006. Jesus Christ. He Look how far away these Jump. are. Wow. Y'all thought we were delaying this episode with a lot of banter. In reality, yeah, we just well, went from zero to 17 murders in five seconds. Yeah. And he also killed these three. At the same time. Was he holding like one knife with his feet? Like, how did he do that? He killed Enoch Alicio Felix Zorera, Pedro Omar Carrera, and Luis Enrique Moran Cervantes with what was becoming his MO. Two shots each because he thought they were using their taxi to help assault people. Uh. So Seagull God perched right on his shoulder. (laughs) and was just like, do you see those three people in a taxi? They're assaulting people. They're committing crimes. Ten minutes earlier, somebody dropped their hot dog on the street. The seagulls swooped in to eat those hot dogs. Taxi turns around the corner, barely missing the seagulls. They immediately fly up on Pedro's shoulder, and they're just like, hey, bro, you saw that? You saw that? Tented murder of a god. Go go deal with them. Go deal with them. All of them. Every one of them. Okay, so seagull god. Right? Seagull god. 
Well, after he murdered all three of them, right? He mm-hmm. then stole their taxi. <laughs> <laughs> it's just him with the seagull with the seatbelt on next to him, just like fucking That's... cruising down the street. The seagull has a little cabbie hat on. Oh my God, they're just flying in the wind. It's beautiful. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, and I want to extrapolate from this because like he's working at a mechanic shop, right? In Horel at this time, mm. like I said before. Yeah. And a few of these crimes, like I, we didn't mention all of them, but a few of these crimes were done. Like he murdered them, shot him in the head, yeah, which is yeah. his MO, his new MO, shot him in the head twice. Yeah. He then proceeded to either steal their bike <laughs> or their car. He had done it a few times through his murders. So I wonder, and this is me extrapolating this, if he was also working the angle of some kind of chop shop at his mm. mechanic area because he was stealing their car, bringing it back. <laughs> Seagull Automotive. <laughs> chip shop i don't know dude i'm starting to think he's innocent i'm starting to I'm starting to worry about these fucking seagulls i think his most telling murders though for his mission from god are his next and last few so again you know as i said he just killed three people at once yeah now he's gonna kill two people at once okay his 13th and 14th murders of nazano julian temeres perez mm-hmm. and didier jesus zapata dulanto he killed them because in quote, I killed teachers Nazario Temes Perez uh-huh. and Didier Zapato Delante. They were walking along the edge of an irrigation canal holding hands. Mm. They were affectionate like a couple in love mm. and like me. I am the purifier of the earth. Okay. There was no other option but to kill them because homosexuals only harm society. Well, and then after he killed them, he then proceeded to steal their shoes and $36 they had on them. They didn't have a car, so he had to get their mode of transportation. <laughs> he stole their shoes and then held their hands. And it was like, ha ha, yeah. I've stolen your affection too. <laughs> this dude is fucking yeah. off his goddamn rocker. I mean, I know you He's said it crazy. from the start. Yeah. But like, and it, with the serial killer with the name like Mr. Clean, um, I'm expecting that, you know? Um, yeah. Damn. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And and this happened on December 18th in 2006. So, like, he's not that far from the other three people he just killed. Yeah. Like, this is four months and 16 people. Well, six months with 16 people. As you're reading these dates, I feel like he's slowly approaching behind me right now, even though I'm looking in a camera and I can see <laughs> behind me. You're just like, yeah. He, and then, you know, on um, May 8th, 2024... He was in Asheville, North Carolina, specifically. <laughs> and just like, what? <laughs> like, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, this is recent, too. This is why I wanted to do it, because it's more recent than yeah, the other totally, ones. Yeah, totally, I mean, totally. he's 2006. Well, Pedro mm. said in his testimony, and this is heartbreaking, mm. that one of the two teachers, the two people he just killed, just were begging on their knees, please don't kill me. And then he proceeded cruelly to put two bullets in each of their heads. Jesus Just Christ. like his MO. Yeah. Yeah. You know, talking about the way he did, he killed the bulls, killed the cows. Mm -hmm. He didn't torture or kidnap or maim anybody, right? So he didn't do that. All he did was shoot them twice. He just said he was the cleaner, right? So he just had to get rid of them as quick as possible. You know how they say, like, there's um, there's process killers and product, you know, killers? Mm -hmm. He was like a product killer, but like in the literal sense, like he stole products. (laughs) Yeah, he did. Yeah. He's like, ha ha, I got your huffy. (laughs) Like, it's just like. Yeah. I took your bike. (laughs) Oh, like, it's like, like most product killers are like, I collect fingers, you know, like it's something like that. He's just like, nah, I just take the shit. (laughs) Yeah. It's like a commercial and he like, he shoots them and then turns to the camera pan. (laughs) Ha ha. I've got your new this murder <laughs> this murder was brought to you by the new iPhone 15 even when it gets dropped <laughs> in the water during your murder it still works camera's the same as the 14 though and actually yeah because uh, he probably was just selling this stuff after he took it obviously uh, the cash he was you know just taking it and kind of using it. it as a way to feed his family I guess I don't know well as you can probably tell from the descriptions that his MO was to shoot his victims in yeah, the head double tap and his weapon of choice was a 9 millimeter pistol which honestly okay. that seems like something he would use That's... and then would rob them this well, is a very rational MO like I gotta say yeah. like out of all the serial killers we've covered this is the most rational MO first off 
his gun actually makes fucking sense. That's a big one. <laughs> yes, it um, does. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and not just that, but it is a gun and not just some random fucking weapon or just trying to strangle them and, you know, come yep. so fucking much that the police are convinced it's a gang of boys every time something happens, you know. Um, yeah. You know, like, um, Yoakum Kroll, shout out. But um, a nine millimeter, two shots to the head, very effective way to execute somebody. Known the world over is yeah. that. Um, uh-huh. th- this makes sense. And then he steals shit. He's, damn, he's towing yeah. a weird line. It's it's taken me this long to think that. <laughs> <laughs> and the big point I want to make too is these are not sexual crimes either. Mm. These are not like he's getting off on shooting them, which is mm-hmm. like you know most serial killers. There's there's a point to where they're like they get off on some of this stuff. And yeah, yeah. when we talked earlier about him taking pleasure in killing bulls and stuff like that, he did take pleasure, but I don't think it was a sexual pleasure. I don't think that that came in with it. He like literally just loves the moment of murder. Yes. Like yeah. straight up loves the moment of murder and then loves that his love of the moment of murder generally provides quick transportation away. Yeah. Well, okay. most of the time it seems he was like pretty out in the open with his crimes, kind of like Ugh. when he was on the beach, he shot the person. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And he seemingly was able to get away with it for the two years that he was committing murder. You know, the one year in four months where he committed one murder and then the six dead four to six months where he committed the 16 other murders. Yeah, yeah. This was because he used a rubber homemade silencer. And Gil, I want you to try to take a guess what the rubber was from. Oh, fuck. Um, Probably not condoms. Um, Uh, Yeah. I mean, that would have been late. The rubber, a rubber silencer. I hope it was a rubber ducky. So just every time he shot his... Quack, <laughs> just like, quack, quack. <laughs> just like, he's in the house. Quack, quack. Oh God, quack, quack. <laughs> just like what? quack, quack. <laughs> Why? It was not. It was from a sandal. It was literally a chunkla silencer. Oh my God, chunkla silence is violence. Well, let's get into the last of his crimes and what actually led to his arrest. Mm. It was on December twenty seventh. 2006. Crazy that this is like literally not that far after his last murders. His his actual murder spree is ramping up period or whatever. How many months is this across? Uh, so let's say he it's six. It's it's six months honestly. So really it was like a doom 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 doom. Brrr. Like that's yep. Cut. Damn. Yeah. He well that's because he discovered Crocs. But anyways, <laughs> oh, yeah, he moved real fast. He put him in sport mode too. Uh, once he once he discovered he could use Chunkla Crocs, um, <laughs> he got way faster. Wait a second. <laughs> well, on December twenty seventh, two thousand six, he killed Nicholas Talentini Perezaka Gamboa. Was murdered with Gil. Can you guess what he was? How he was murdered? The Chunkla silencer shot to the head just like every other murder he had committed. He was really doing the John Wick style kill, I guess. After John Wick knocks him down, bam. Yeah. Yeah. This would be his last murder because the very next day, Mm -hmm. they arrested him. Because he was going to the the dollar store every fucking day (laughs) and buying 30 pairs of (laughs) flip-flops. And they're just like, we keep finding flip-flops at every fucking murder scene with bullet holes in them. We thought he was just (laughs) shooting their feet, but apparently the bullets are going the other way. We should go check the dollar stores and see if, and they're just like, yeah, no, nah, he's been, we've been calling you for months about this guy that just keeps yeah. buying flip-flops every day. He comes in here, he's covered in blood, always has a different bike, always has a different car, like screamed at me about eating yes. a watermelon on my lunch break. I don't even know how I got back in that room. Yeah, it's, it's true. And I mean, the specialized personnel division in the National Police of mm-hmm. Peru had been investigating the murders between December 18th and December 27th of 2006. They had only been investigating him for nine days. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it took to find him. <laughs> that like, A, makes me concerned that he's not actually the killer. Like, honestly, that's my first... My first thought is that he's not actually the killer. How many fucking murders happened before this that the police weren't investigating? Yeah, no, and that's my thing, is they weren't investigating this at all. This is not a success story. Until, 
<laughs> no, until until like I guess this was probably fourteenth, fifteenth victim, mm. <laughs> which is a lot of victims that they actually started investigating this guy. His serial killer Quinceanera. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Well, so I love that. The special unit used witnesses to draw a picture of Pedro as well as clues at the crime scenes to pick up his trail. So, okay. honestly, nine days is so quick for any criminal trial, criminal investigation to pick up the person. So, yeah, it does make me think, in your your uh, your point there, it does make me think that he's not the killer, but he is the killer because people pointed him out and was like, that guy's the killer, <laughs> the witnesses of all the people that were murdered. I don't know. He didn't kill that dog. So, you know, you got to wonder, as he said, you know, that's true. You know, I mean, if the flip flop don't fit, you have to acquit. Guilty. Gil Cochran over here. (laughs) You know, (laughs) maybe you could go down there and help him out. (laughs) Well, they eventually found his place of work and they burst into the mechanic shop as he was working and arrested him. But Pedro did not go down without a fight. He shot one of the agents that was sent to arrest him, mm-hmm. and, but he was eventually dragged down and cuffed. Mm. After his arrest, Pedro said that he was about to commit a massacre right <laughs> before they did that. So this is December 28th, right? So this is December 28th, they're arresting him. <laughs> yeah. And he, the next three days later, December 31st, what's on December 31st? New Year's Eve. Mm, yes. At midnight, he was going to throw a hand grenade into a discotheque located in the downtown URL and kill a bunch of, in quotation, sinners. Rick, where'd you get a hand grenade? <laughs> yeah, it's it's it makes me think, like, this guy was going from small time, right? Because he started, like, I'm killing one at first. I'm killing one. Then I'm killing two, three, two. And then he's like, mm. well, if I can kill three at a time, mm-hmm. why can't I kill, like, 15, yeah, you know, hurt 15, go in there and kill them with the grenade the and sooner, stuff like that. So he's getting bigger. The sooner people clear away from the New Year's Eve party, the sooner the seagulls can come in. This this is making sense to me right now. Exactly. But like, this guy begs the question that he's not serial killer. You think like motive, you think, you know, uh, um, a process and product, you know, you have, you have those kind of things. This guy just seems like a fucking murderer. Yes. Like, he doesn't actually seem like an actual serial killer, which I know if it's multiple times, if it's a, if it's a serial, you know, events, a serial set of events, then technically, you know, but this guy kind of just seems like a killer. Like, I feel like, I feel like 1930s, 1940s, like, Germany, he would have done really good. <laughs> he would have been a hero. <laughs> yeah. He would have been a hero over there. Yeah. Well, As he was being arrested, he actually asked for the death penalty, saying, I ask for a firing squad, something practical, (laughs) like I did with those people. (laughs) I shot them in the head. If I am free, I will continue with my cleanup mission. This guy is literally following the golden rule to death. Also, that has to be like jerking off for him. This is, uh, I don't hate this guy. I hate what he's done. And I I hate hate him. him. I hate him. But as like a character, I don't think he did it. <laughs> I think they found a crazy person. I don't believe the police were able to act on hunting down a serial killer in nineties. Not just being able to identify the serial killer or get all the suspects, yada yada so. yada. This is two thousand. That doesn't fucking matter in nine days. And like outside of Lima, oh, in per- nine days, yeah. Outside of Lima, Peru, Lima's not tiny, dude. <laughs> like, no, so it's huge. In- Lima is a huge city. Yeah, so <laughs> like. In nine days, they were able to um, hunt down the serial killer, narrow down their suspects. Not only that, but find the fucking place he was working. Mm-hmm. Set up a sting operation, because we have to look at it that, as that. That was a sting operation. Oh, yeah. So that was, just yeah. adds two or three more days to the planning, because they're, he's going to be at work on Tuesday. We're going to go in, you know, just after lunch, so he's not super angry at us, you know, or whatever. But, like, <laughs> yeah, whatever they do. you know, but, like, I don't know, dude. That's, like, that's, I kind of feel like they might be pinning the the town, like, crazy person, honestly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, well, I hear you. But that's well, just me. I want to bring in. Yeah, and and that's fine, you know. And mm-hmm. I actually think that this guy did it, but you oh, know, we're, we can always have opposing views. Well, 
On his first night of being in lockup, he actually tried to kill himself by smashing his head against a wall. And throughout his time in jail, he continuously tried to kill himself, saying, since I am no longer fulfilling God's mission, they captured me. Mm. Now I keep hearing that the voice that tells me to kill myself. Mm. Seagull came in the window yeah, and was just glass. like, you're no longer useful to me. There's no food. Yeah. You know? He there's can't glass. pass his food, no food. You glass. can't feed me anymore. That makes sense. Yep. Okay. So kill yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he was sentenced, ended up being sentenced to 35 years in La Gancho prison and eventually was moved to a mental health ward in the prison where he is still actually alive and locked up today. That's, he needs help. Yeah, he needs to 100%. be hundred percent. Well, yeah. Now, I know you think this is nice and wrapped up for good now, huh? No. Nope. Pedro is in prison and the story ends. Well, actually- The sequels are out the there. The story- does not end. Oh, fuck. Do you remember how I said he wouldn't be the first person in his family to travel abroad? If you don't remember that from earlier in the episode, remember that Pedro changed his name to Nakata mm-hmm. from Messiah because he wanted to go to Japan. His brother actually lived out that dream because he wanted to pretty much get away from the problems that his brother's murders and arrests had caused him, right? Mm-hmm. Obviously, yeah. So. Veron Jonathan Nakata Ludinia moved to Japan in 2006 or 2007, around that time, right after his arrest, and he made it his home. He lived there for about nine-ish, ten years. Okay. It was known as being very antisocial okay. and didn't make many friends at all. And Gil, I know you're asking, why are you telling me about his brother? That's going to come clear very soon. Very, very soon. Joey, why, why all the teasing? Why are you holding back like this? Also... I can't believe I didn't pick up on this earlier. He changed his name from including the word Messiah when he went on his God's telling me what to do killing spree. Yep. This dude was going undercover. Sorry. But I just. Exactly. Agreed. It was in your name. It was your destiny. Yeah. (laughs) It was. It's so weird that he changed it to Nakata, which means rice patty Mm. in Japanese, though. Honestly, I would probably say it's hard to move to another country where you don't speak the language. Yes. And having to learn the language while you're working to survive. Mm-hmm. Well, his brother eventually, he just wanted to erase some of the demons and maybe put a bit of closure on his brother's book, right? So yeah. he went back to Peru to visit his brother in jail. Oh. Yeah, right? He just wanted to talk to him and be like, okay, like, why did you do this? What's mm-hmm. going on? All this stuff. And as of now, and, you know, this were eight years from what's about to happen. Oh. As of now, nothing is known of the conversation or even how long it was between Jonathan and his brother Pedro. Okay. Because the year he returned back to Japan in between September 14th and 16th, 2015, Mm -hmm. he broke into three homes in an attempt to steal money and valuables. He brutally murdered six people. He introduced him to the fucking seagull. (laughs) <laughs> Bro, what? Damn. No history of violence in this country. No history of violence in Peru that has been made aware of. I mean, obviously, we talked about the abusiveness between it, the family, but there's no murders that we have been made aware of in between this part. I'm going to say, like, you said it was six years in Japan? Is that right? He was about eight, eight, eight nine okay, years. Eight, eight nine years? You... You went from Peru to Japan and managed mm-hmm. to pull off, at that point, creating a 100% a new fucking life Yeah, in a country yep. that you linguistically have no fucking reference for, for the culture, it's for the language. Completely different. For, that is quite literally the opposite side of the planet. I think geographically it is exactly the opposite side of the planet from where he went. Yeah, so like he had to have some very strong like semblance of like rationality, of sanity, of, you know what I'm saying? Like he had to have not just like street smarts, but book smarts at the same time. And like, Mm -hmm. you have to be a fairly fucking intelligent person to pull that shit off. Just like fucking showing up. Yep. And then just being like, all right, starting a life here. And then it just fucking works. Like, that's also the exact same reason why, like, folks that, you know, immigrate or migrate, you know, like, to the United States, like, I have so much fucking respect for these folks. Oh, like, for Indian sure. Indian folks and, like, folks from, like, Latin America and stuff like that, where it's just, like, they're coming here, they're getting jobs, and they're just, like, struggling through learning the language. But honestly, 
way the fuck quicker than I would ever be able to fucking do that. <laughs> like all this oh, 100%. That is so yep. much fucking effort. And I just feel like if a seagull's telling you to kill people walking, you know, <laughs> down parkways <laughs> or murder folks for watermelon or steal people's you huffies. You just turn that out. Like, I just, I feel like, eh, I don't feel like you would, I don't know. I just feel like, you know, I feel like the kitchen pantry kind of like only has enough ingredients for one of those. You know what I'm saying? For one of those <laughs> dishes. And the fact that he just like popped up and then immediately was like, bad boys now for life. Like, and just fucking like took off seagull in the passenger seat, seatbelt on the seagull, little cabbie hat, like second fucking taxi to get taken out. His brother's just driving away from the jail. Like, this is nuts. Or they switched places. Ooh, that just broke my brain. You're welcome. Well, wow. Well, well, as I said, he murdered six people brutally, a couple in their 50s, an 84-year-old woman, a 41-year-old woman, okay. and her two daughters who were 10 and 7 in their homes. He stabbed each one of them to death with a kitchen knife, which is not the MO of the other guy. Um. So... This is weird. Really crazy. <laughs> this is yeah. No, no this it, this is real weird. <laughs> it doesn't make like to me like when I found the when I found Pager, I was like, oh, this is he should have really been. interesting story. Yeah, and then I didn't know about his brother. Yeah, and as I was getting through the story of his like life, and I was like, okay, like reading through it, and then I freaking look and was like, holy shit, he has a brother that also murdered people. And I was like, this is a family affair and not even in the same country. Went to a different country uh, and murdered people. A uh, country brother. that is generally known to be safe. Yeah. You know, generally in Japan is a safe country. Yeah. And to be fair, I think I remember hearing about this oh. in 2015. Mm -hmm. Hearing about that guy. The more I think about it, the more I like recall these little things about a guy who stabbed six people. Was it a sequel telling you this? I'm just asking for a friend. No, I no, I don't think so. I okay. don't think it was okay, a seagull. Okay, cool. Cool. Just There's, checking. We don't I don't live you know, don't live near the beach, you know. Yes. There's probably not a seagull here around me telling me. Probably not. Um what? What? Oh enough. Don't worry about me. You know, he's yeah. No no no. The, those toilet paper rolls fell over on their own. So how did okay, so this is this is the the flip that I'm this is the uh lazy eight infinity symbol that I'm seeing here, right, with these plots. Mm -hmm. You have the person who's completely cuckoo bananas. Right, um, off their fucking rocker, mm -hmm. right, and they get, you know, God's talking to me. I'm the Messiah, which is why I'm removing the name Messiah from my name, and um, <laughs> and like yeah. I'm gonna bald gracefully. I'm gonna become Mister Clean. I made that part up, but the Mister Clean part's true. Um, anyways, yeah. so so this dude, he's cuckoo bananas, but he's killing people yep. in a very like cold calculating way Specific to murder way. folks like yep. that's like straight up like i am a professional hitman this is how i do it like yeah. that is a very like He's not playing around his fucking silencers mm -hmm. are fucking chanclas okay first off mm -hmm. they're everywhere second off he didn't even need to pull the gun out people would have been in fear you know like he just had yep. to pull up the fucking chancla and people were <laughs> people were tying yep. their own arms <laughs> behind their backs so like <laughs> yep so he's over there he just made fucking the 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 chunkla silencer um somehow uh -huh. gets caught within nine days. Yeah. I sorry, but that's like a he's running on a racetrack and then all of a sudden steps into sixteen inches of mud and is just like running slow through. So that part of the story doesn't make any fucking sense to me. That smells fishy. Um, you know, uh -huh. not to attract the seagulls. So he gets caught. He gets into jail. His brother, who was essentially besides the whole like. I'm going to participate in a gang rape of you because you murdered a pregnant dog. Um, mm -hmm. Assuming it was one of those brothers, right? Um, yes, it was. Okay. so But narrative-wise, he was a rational actor who was also a piece of shit at some point earlier in his life, yeah, right? And for sure. Well, I for mean, sure. permanently, but y you know what I mean. Um, what the fuck? And then he comes back and he murders stupidly? Like, I don't, who does a butter knife? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't. None of this makes sense. What makes it even crazier is he was so close to being arrested, right? Uh-huh. 
he, they, he was feeling it. He was like feeling the cops are closing mm-hmm. around me. And in one of the houses that he broke into, he cut both of his wrists mm. and then jumped from a second story window to try to kill himself. But he failed. He obviously lived. Are we sure? Are we sure about the date that his brother came back from Japan? Yes, it's it's not far. It's seventeen. The September fourteenth through the sixteenth is when he started breaking in homes. Two thousand fifteen. He came in in that same year. Yes, he came in in that same year. He came back to Japan in that or, same. He came year. back from Japan to Peru. There's no chance that the brother came from Japan to Peru during this uptick in killing sprees and all this bullshit. Right, dipped mm-hmm. back out to Japan, came back and visited his brother. And his brother got pinned for shit. Because I'm, bro, I'm going conspiracy. I know you're trying to get away from the moon shit, but like something's fucking, something's hey, fishy I'll, here I'll and say, the seagulls are he swarming. Was still, he, was, he was still in Peru okay. while his brother was murdering these people. Uh, so your your sense could be could be close. That's a great quote. That's a great, I, I am picking up on what you're setting down here. He was in Peru, but he left right after his brother got arrested. So what huh. you're thinking is like, that's such a great thing. And then, but he hit, my thing is like, he hit, what he hit away? Yes, he literally went to Japan <laughs> and started no, a and new life. No, and he didn't kill life. anybody. Well, yeah, we don't yeah. know that. We don't know yeah, if true. murders took place in Japan, you know. Also, half the time, you know, he was probably just trying to translate shit in his own head so he could figure out if people were sinning. You know, like, <laughs> like I mean, you know, the yeah. seagull spoke Japanese over there. So, like, that took a while. But, like, but yeah. now I also am. I don't think he could have gotten a gun over there as easily as he could have gotten one in Peru, I imagine. Which is how he learned how to use knives. Which, knife killing is super common in countries where there's strict gun laws. Like, stabbings, uh. um, you know, knife killings, uh bottlings, right? Like that shit's super common in countries yeah. where they have strict gun laws. That and crossbows. But that's just too comical to cover. For sure. But um Yeah. But no, so I wanna look at this fucking timeline, bro. I wanna see when the fuck did the brother dip out, go to Japan, learn a new fucking technique for murder eventually with fucking kitchen knives. Right, like, and maybe continue over there. Like, I, I'm very fucking curious about that because there's something that just doesn't seem right about his brother. His brother seems too fucking impressionable and not yeah. rational enough to carry out murders the way he was. Because that's like some, that's some very like, Specific. I don't know, um, American killers. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's like some very, you know, quit. That's Samuel Jackson and fucking, um. Uh, John Travolta in like Pulp Fiction, you know, as the seer- as the fucking hitmen, like that's very like cold. Yeah, and yeah, it was very cold. This dude is one step away from quite literally getting ideas from a from a seagull, you know, like and um, yeah. But now I'm wondering, was his brother on the other side of the prison wall with a seagull puppet telling him what to do this whole fucking time? <laughs> you know, like I'm curious now, bro. Well, his brother, the mm-hmm. one you know. Jonathan was arrested and he tried to claim paranoid schizophrenia just mm. like his brother. But and what's telling how recent this is. Okay. In 2020, after rejecting that appeal to send him to a mental institution, a mental ward to be helped, he was given a life sentence to serve out the rest of his time in jail. So both of them are on life sentences to serve out their time in jail. Mm. I don't know. His brother is in Peru. Yeah. Pedro is in Peru Uh serving a life sentence. Well, he's actually not even serving a life sentence. He's in a mental ward right now. 30 something years, right? Yeah, but he's in a mental ward though. So now he can't be in Peru. The the law states that because he legally has, insane. because he's paranoid schizophrenia, yeah. he's legally insane, he cannot be held against him for his crimes. Yeah. So if he has ever said that he is okay, he can leave. Yeah. We we learned that with Pedro Alonso Lopez like a hundred percent. But yeah. like it's the same fucking thing. But yeah. I do But he's not gonna get out of jail. They're not gonna get rid of him. They're not gonna take him out of uh, the mental <laughs> ward. He'll just be taken into custody the second he crosses the border. Um, um but um, <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. but no, um I do agree with that approach to rehabil I let me rephrase that. I agree with that direction in rehabilitation. Let me phrase it that way. 
I'm not saying that I yeah, agree with the current sure. outcome and yada, 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 but in terms of like what we should work for, work towards as a society. Um, yeah, dude's clearly fucking crazy. Like he's clearly insane. A hundred percent. Like, yep. and he clearly was not, you know, raised in a situation where he had access to or, you know, um, any type of encouragement to seek support, seek help, um, to find proper medications, you know, whatever cocktail of psycho like psychotropic meds that he needed in order to, you know, coast through the world and like have a good life, yada yada. Um, not in a situation for that. And this is a very strong societal slap in the face to be like, we're gonna work on finding that for you because that wasn't your fault. Um yeah. I, I'm throwing it back to the brother conspiracy. I really think heat was on him and he had his brother fucking take the fall. I 100% fucking believe yeah. that. Um, and then when he got arrested, he's like, well, it worked for my brother. This is my chance to get out in 30 years. And like yeah, a, sure. a mental, you know, like a psychiatric institution is going to be way more chill than a prison in Peru oh, yes. um, or a prison fucking anywhere when you're only up for yeah, murder. For sure. You know, um, yeah. so like he was like, oh, yeah, no, just like my brother. Yes, I'm just like that. That's why that, 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 that. But like, I don't know, man. <laughs> I like it. Well, and so ends the tale of the two brothers of Peru, both cut from the same cloth and ended up in the same way, just on complete other sides of the world. One can wonder what would happen if Pedro had actually gone to Japan instead of his brother. Maybe more of the same, or maybe he would have sought out help. Who really knows? But all I can say is that if they thought they could be cleaners of everything that in what they called wrong in this world, that maybe they should have looked a little deeper inside of themselves and cleaned that out first. Mm. Thank you for listening. And go to therapy. If you have those kind of thoughts please go to therapy especially if you don't Pedro didn't even know that he was having those thoughts he just thought that ship's number anyways we love you all bye bye thank you for listening to the black cat report in episode 97 the apostle of death this weekend we'll be hitting out to camp for a special episode being released soon can't wait for you to hear it if you haven't please follow us on instagram or facebook or even TikTok. That's where you can find the most up-to-date news for BCR. See you on the other side.